Hello guys, welcome back to my Brave X Fuse Guide. Okay, so I'm gonna review the most powerful physical DPS on the global, Zenaida. Okay, so let's begin from her stats like usual. And what I can say is, wow, her stats is already pretty decent. Yes, if you compare her to Elena, Elena still has better stats because like I said, Elena Awakened version is monster in terms of stats. But compared to unawakened characters, I can say that Zenaida does pretty well, okay? Because like you can see that she has nice health, defense, and spirit, okay? They are better than War Hero Region. If you compare her to Cloud Advanced Children, Yes, they are about the same in terms of health, defense, spirit. But again, in terms of attack boost, Zenaida is the winner. And the best part is, Zenaida learns plus 6 times change damage modifier when she dual wield a weapon. So yes, pretty amazing. And for true double wield, true dual wield, I mean, it's same like other true dual wielder, okay, 150%. So yes, I have nothing to complain about her stats, but maybe if I want to find something to complain, maybe I can say what she doesn't have fatal damage protection. Okay, so that's the only weakness I think. And another great thing is she has 100% LP damage. Okay, so you it will make your task increasing her LP damage boost a little bit easier. And of course, she has amazing killers, beast, human, dragon, and stone. Wow, four enemies type. Okay, 125%. If you combine her trust master reward, that means 150%. With right Asper, she can easily reach 225 or 250% killers. Okay, amazing character. So enough about stats, let's take a look on her abilities. She able to become a chainer and LB finisher. Okay, so that's very flexible, but the most powerful is the LB finisher. For absolute mirror of equity, if you want to get the maximum damage, you need to pair her with a duplicate because yes, she has pentacast. So if you only use triple cast mirror of equity, it's not that powerful. Okay, so her pentacast can deal uh, 250 times damage. Wow, that's impressive. But if you take a look on her limit burst, that's even more insane. Because without equipping anything, okay, she already deal 240 times damage. Wow, how's that not insane? Okay, and if you add, let's say you give her 100% LB damage more, that means she deals 360 times damage on the pedal. That's insane, guys. And you can easily, I mean, yes, this LB only require 40 LB crystals. So on your normal turn, you can simply chain your absolute mirror of equity and you able to fill your LB gauge easily. Or if you, if the enemies cannot drop LB crystals, she also has uh, LB filling skill. Okay, six LB per cast. So using Pentacast, she able to refill 30 LB per turn. So that's really amazing. She also able to imbue and imperil four elements: fire, earth, and Fire, Earth, Dark, and Thunder element. So half of the elements on this game, which is insane. And don't forget, also in peril. Okay, 120%. So she is a true dual wield. She is true dual wielder. So let's say if your character able to imperil water, you can simply equip her with water elemental weapon. So you don't need to worry about imbuing her with water. Okay, she also able to break, but I don't recommend that. It is just a backup breaking tool, okay? And if you think that her killers, her passive killers are not enough, don't worry because she still has Q. 
killers buff for herself, okay? That's really insane, guys. Okay, especially after 5 turns, she can cast 150% killer buffs. So if you fight human, dragon, stone, and beast enemies, after 5 turns, I can say that that enemy is probably gonna be dead, okay? Because of this buff and her amazing limit burst. And for rotation, you can see it here, okay? Bread of Heavens, basically, this is only to maintain your queen cast. Um, yes, after that, Bread of the Lion. And yeah, basically, to increase your stats and killers, okay? Other than 200% single stats buff, it also gives you 75% killer, okay? And Bread Lion... Flame strike, if I'm not mistaken, this is for imbuing fire attack, okay? And on the second turn, you can actually use your limit burst maybe, but again, I think it's better to wait until you able to imperil the enemies first to deal maximum amount of damage, okay? So this rotation here, assuming you don't have other characters who able to imperil. Let's say if you use Rena. Luna Freya, then those characters able to imperil and imbue yourself. So maybe you can even use your rotate limit burst starting on the first turn. So let's talk about partner now. She is a finisher, okay? So you need to have a backup chainer like healing a Vatarlet and Riku, okay? And remember that she is a true dual wielder, so she needs higher chain count to reach her plus 6 time change damage modifier. If you're able to deal elemental chain, you need to land the last hit when the hit counts above 20, okay? Remember that? So that means if you need elemental chain, the easiest way to make elemental chain is to have a character who able to imbue element to all allies. For example, Luna Freya. Rena, Lucas, okay, they are really good because they're able to imbue and imperil at the same time. And for LP damage, remember that some characters are able to give LP damage buff on the battle. So again, Luna Freya is really great because she able to give you 50% LP damage boost. Okay, really insane with that high innate passive LB damage boost and buff from the battle, Zenaida gonna deal tons of damage. Also for blue match Finner, yes this Finner able to yeah in, uh, increase 30% LB damage okay and she is not as good as your premium healer but because Zenaida shield able to kill the enemies really fast, then it's okay to use a character like this, okay? That's what amazing about Zenaida, okay? And remember, if you need to kill the enemies on the first turn, then you need to feel her LP on the first turn. How that can be? You can simply use the newest Final Fantasy Type 0 characters, okay? So Ace, Ram, and this steadfast soldier Makina, all of them able to refill 40 LB crystals to all allies. Okay, that's really amazing. Insanely good. And yes, I only display Makina here because he is free character. So I believe you have him. And of course, if you really want to deal maximum amount of damage, Van will be good because Van has insane break starting on the first turn. But if you have this that was Makina, I can say that, yes, Riku is also quite good. Same for healing of her lead. Okay, so in our partner for trial, I can say that Zenaida can easily kill all available trial. Okay, but the best trial right now she can defeat is the newest one, Scorn of the Sworn Egg of Palladia, because all of those are human. And remember, Zenaida has insane human killers. So yes, she can take that trial really easy. Okay, so in about trial, now let's talk about equipment. So another weakness Zenaida has 
is her equipment. Actually, it is not a weakness, okay? But her weapon choice is kind of limited. Spear, fist, and mace. Mace is bad weapon. So let's just ditch that from the equation. So your weapon should be spear and fist. And tank cut, you can obtain STMR level weapons for those free from trial. Longinus against Lich and Tiger Fang. And remember, at this point, Lich and Tiger Fang from I forgot Dark Dark Siva or Dark Golem. I forgot. Okay, that trial, those trials are kind of easy at this point. Okay, so yes, you can easily obtain those weapons, and by equipping those two, you get additional fairy and aquatic killer. Fairy gonna be useful when you fight against that scorn of the mad doll. Okay, so that's it for weapon. For for accessories and abilities, she already has 150% through dual wield. Okay, that's very nice. So you only need 50% more. If you have uh, Kingdom Heart, Trust Master Reward, Riku and Sora, STMR, I mean, then those STMR are really good, okay, because it increased 70% use attack boost and 50% uh, through draw wield. Yes, okay, so really good. But if you don't have those fancy, those fancy STMR, then simply use Hermes sandals, okay, 50% from accessory. And maybe the best accessory for her is Lucid Lenses or Chocobo Feather from Chocobo Fina STMR. Okay, those two give you Fatal Damage Protection, one of her weakness. After you equipping those things, okay, focus on LB damage because LB is her most powerful attack and like I said, you want to increase her LB to about 100% more. So you can easily get that if you have Cloud Advent Children take take his trust master from him okay use an Ida. i think you yeah, not i think but she's better than cloud advanced children oh please don't hurt me okay don't hurt me okay if you want to use cloud advanced children go ahead he is still pretty good but compared to zenaida mm, i will leave that to you okay and Yes, Crown Prince Noctis Trust Master Reward is also pretty good. If you are free players, then you can also equip War Goddess Insignia. And Heart Overcoming High Hatred. Okay, 50% LB damage. Insanely good. Okay, so enough about equipment. My conclusion for Zenaida. I believe you know that on Japan, she is the most powerful character before Neo Vision come to the global. So simple guys. If you have her, that means you able to clear all trials before Neo Vision come out easily. Period. Okay, I can say that Zenaida is the pinnacle of seven stars. Okay, the memento before we get that Neo Vision feature. Okay, so with her with her being a fable right now, I don't think I don't think Neo Vision gonna be far, okay? Probably we're gonna get it on September, okay, after August announcement. That's just my opinion, okay? I mean yes, my prediction, I mean. So take it with a grain of salt. But really guys, she's really insane. Four killers, four elements, simple to use. Insane damage modifier, able to chain. Yeah, basically, she's crazily, crazy powerful, okay? And her trust master reward is also pretty decent, I must say. 60% attack without restricted to certain weapon. Also, 25% beast, human, dragon, and stone killer. I know that's kind of small, but even without that, I can still say that this is good trust master reward because, like I said, 60%. No weapon restriction, no stats reduction. Because if you remember, uh, Vincent Trust Master Reward 
reduce your spirit by 10%. So this stress mastery reward is pretty good. And for STMR, it's also good, but I think it's kind of overkill. Most top tier true dual wield characters have, let's say, 150% true dual wield. So that means you waste 50% true dual wield stats. But from what I know, on Japan, they kind of um, increase the true dual wield cap, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. So let's say they increase the cap into 300% true dual wield. In that case, this STMR gonna be really good. Okay, because basically, this gives you, this save you two abilities slot. Plus two accessory slot, I mean, sorry. And with amazing attack plus 65. Okay, so really nice, I must say. And yes, maybe, maybe if global delay the Neo Vision, they will release global exclusive unit like Elena version 2 or whatever. In that case, yes, maybe that Elena version 2 gonna be more powerful than Zenaida, but really without global exclusive trial. I think it's useless to have Elena because yeah, it, when you pulled Elena, in the end she's gonna be poor creep by Neovision. Okay, same for Zenaida. But the point here is Zenaida is non-limited. She is the only character on her banner. And yes, if you have her, you are good to go until Neovision available. So really guys, I really encourage you to get Zenaida. But of course if you already have let's say Phoenix Jake, then of course you don't need to pull for Zenaida because Phoenix Jake is already able to almost one shot all the boss on this game too. Okay, so I think that's all you need to know about Zenaida. Thank you very much for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more Final Fantasy Perfect CS Guide. Bye-bye, guys.